Uh, just say, well, you know, to go ahead and look at a week in advance, uh, get our game plan down a little bit better, um, just get more familiar with everything. Trey, you were a Mr. Football uh, winner at Tennessee. They announced the finalists today. What, what, what did that, what did that award mean to you? And uh, and then to come here and play, what it, does any added meaning to that? Yeah, that's a really big deal to me, man. Uh, in high school. I didn't really know how important it was when I was younger, but I know my sophomore year, when I got invited, it was a really big deal. Uh, it means a lot. I won it two times, you know, being able to play for my home school. After winning, that's a really big deal. Uh, I know I give Eric Gray some crap a lot of times. He won it three times. The only one to do that. I thought I should have won it three times, but you know, that's in the past. But uh, you know, it's it's a really cool event, man. It's a uh, it's a nice event. I know we we had it at Titan Stadium, uh, Nissan Stadium, excuse me. But I mean, it was it was a dope event. It was awesome to see. You. NFL players and just being able to win an award like that. What is a Trey uh, Smith five week Saturday? Uh, my Saturday, sitting on the couch, <laughs> watching ball, um, play a little bit of video games, learn familiar with like Smash Bros, uh, NCAA football, obviously on like 360. I just chilled out. I didn't want to do too much. Who's your favorite offensive line for like, college football? Uh, honestly, any offensive line my friends playing on. Uh, I got, you know, guys on Kentucky like Drake Jackson, uh, if it's Alabama, Jed Wills, Alex Sutherwood, Landon Dickerson, uh, Cesar Ruiz at Michigan. Just any, anybody I know on the offensive line, I like to watch them play. You know, my guys in Notre Dame, they got hurt, but uh, I like watching any of my friends. When you watch offensive line play, what are the sort of plays that make you say, wow, that guy's uh, anytime someone throws someone on their butt yeah. or anytime on their back. Uh, a lot of times I'll watch tackles, man, just watching their footwork, hand placement. Uh, really, the NFL sort of wows me more so uh, than college football. And I, I really watch the tackles because I know the level of skill it takes to block those guys. I see the clips every week. Uh, uh, it's between Tyron. Tyron's like a god on the field. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. No one's getting there. Uh, David Bakhtiari and then uh, Mitchell Schwartz. Pretty dope. And then I was tearing arms to my bad. Do you still think of yourself as a tackle, or have you kind of ingrained yourself as a guard now, or how do you kind of feel about the way that transition is going, and what do you think of yourself now as your natural Yeah, I mean, I love playing guard, um, but I know I'm capable of playing tackle if I need to. Uh, you know, just a proper amount of practice if I need it. You know, just getting ready to actually play the position and understanding it. And then also, if I play tackle, I need to lose a lot of weight. <laughs> That's one thing I'm going to do what, next time. What are the two biggest, or what are the biggest? differences in those two positions? Uh, the brand athlete. I mean, a lot of times a guard, I'll have a bigger dude. Um, this year it's been a little different. A lot of the bigger guys have a lot more wiggle than I used to do. But uh, the smaller guys that tackle, you know, your hand placement has to be critical. It's, you know, a smaller target area, if you don't get your hands on, it's gonna run around you. So there's, there's a little bit of more patience in your set as well. When you talk about hand placement, why, why is that so important for a tackle? Yeah, uh, hand placement's pretty, it's pretty key, man. You got guys like Kavon over there that will sauce you up <laughs> if you don't get your hands on them, man. I mean, footwork is definitely a, it's definitely a major factor, but in my opinion, a lot of times you can have a really great set, but if you're just playing with your hands and he swims you, goes inside. If you don't ever get a grip on him, a lot of guys can be you know, slippery. If you don't have your hands on them, man, how are you gonna block them, in my mind? Mm -hmm. Trey, Nigel, Nigel talked about kind of finding a passion for the game th this season, his last kind of go round. How, how have you kind of seen that, uh, you know, behind the scenes on the practice field and then the success he's had kind of translate that you know, on the Saturdays? Yeah, Nigel's had a tremendous, uh, a tremendous way he's approached the game this year. I've seen it from a leadership standpoint, uh, the seriousness, the uh, severity he knows about everything that's going on. Uh, Nigel likes to get on everybody's butts, <laughs> which we need a lot of times. He's the one that has the guts to come out and say stuff when other people are a little too scared to say anything. Uh, Nigel has worked his butt off, I mean, all year in terms of just studying in the film room, being here extra, asking coach what to do. You know, Nigel is a tremendous leader. I mean, he's worked his butt off. We've seen the results on the field week in, week out. When's the time you remember Nigel getting after somebody? There are a lot. <laughs> Any of those particularly stand out to you or a time? Really Probably doing workouts. You know, people are just sort of slacking off and running, okay. not really, uh, not really giving their all. You know, like just calm guys out. Uh, yeah, even summertime. Mm -hmm.